when we've got everybody in oh. and everybody's here. We got coming in home now. Right, I can't see anybody else now because that means the, the uh, screen's full. I'm just going to ask you, Sue, when you've let everybody in, seeing as I can only see so many on my screen, will you let me know that everybody's here, please? Yeah, everybody's admitted now. Right. So we're all ready to go, are we then, at that, from your point of view? Yeah. Right. Well, I'll just say good evening, everybody. Thank you for attending the monthly meeting of the Parish Council. At this moment in time, I do have to let you know that... Uh, it will be recorded for us taking minute purposes and some other people do record it and put it live. So if you do not wish to be seen, you can actually turn your camera off and uh, just uh, the name will come up with a, a blank face as such. Uh, we will be talking about how we're going to announce this later on in the meeting. But as it goes, I just have to, have to inform you under the regulations. Uh, Next one is, we do not have the vicar, he has given his apologies, so we have no uh, prayers tonight as such, but as a lot of you will have watched the television today and seen the news that our elder gentleman who uh, gained so much money for the uh, National Health Service, Tom, unfortunately has lost his life today, so I'd like us just to have a minute silence on his behalf because he's done so much for the money for the National Health Service and for the British Legion in the past. So we'll have a minute's silence, please. Thank you very much for that remembrance of Captain Tom. And with that, we will start the meeting with, have we got any absences? And seeing as there's only five of us, I can just manage to get us all on the screen. So there's no absences. Thank you very much for that. Do we from the people here have any declarations of interest at, at tonight's meeting? Uh, Chris? Uh, the usual two, joining land, landowners for lays allotments. Uh, and also my wife is a substitute on the IP planning. Nigel? Uh, I'm a friend of an adjoining landowner of the Lays Allotments. Stella, you're muted at the moment, but I'm assuming it's yours the same. Yeah, she's nodding. Yeah, we got there. Right. Thank you for that. Are there any dispensations that have been allowed, Sue? Um, yes, we have two dispensations to Councillor Sizeland. Right, thank you. So with that, we'll move on to number three, which is the police matters. Now, um, obviously, as we've said before in the past, the police won't um, come to these. They're not allowed to do Zoom meetings or whatever. They can only do Teams. It's one of these legal things. But I do believe, Sue, um, you've sent an email round and there's a some form of uh, chance of us speaking with the police there's an option is there um yes they they can't attend zoom meetings um but they can do microsoft teams so as we've got a new pc locally um i think when she's on duty with the pcso karen green 
and um, we'll try and set up um, a Teams meeting just so she can introduce herself to you. And then on top of that, she's organising a local meeting, isn't she? A multi-agency meeting, which obviously you've all been invited to. Yeah, so I, that really is the notification of that. And it's just seeing what, what the times are and who is available when that happens, whether you can join or put your names forward. Uh, with that, um, is there any matters that you as councillors wish us to send back to the police from this meeting tonight? Chris? Uh, just a couple of things. I think some litter picking of the in Needham recreation from Ashbourne Lane to uh, Beresford Road. And uh, I've got this a bit second hand, but I believe this, this, the police I guess the police are asking about uh, was putting a big edge against the footpath there. I don't know. I've got, I've got this rather convoluted, so I don't know that. But the message you got through to me that they asked, they sent an email in to us. So I don't know if if anybody can say yay or nay or. Well, on on the first part that you said about the Ashbourne Lane car park with the rubbish and with the caravan. No, 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 I was, talk, I was talking about the, the footpath. I'm going to go on to the, I've got to go on to the Ashbourne Lane the car park. I mean, I'm talking about the, the public footpath from Ashbourne Lane to Bowesford Road that goes the right-hand side of the, uh, the, 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 uh, all, all, all I was going to say is the one on the Ashbourne Lane, they've actually put that up on their neighbourhood alert stuff today. I've actually seen all that about the yeah, car park. I'd like, to say, I'd like to say something about that. I was just saying is the, I've got the this. Other side. I've got this second hand, but this, this the police are saying that the police are, are sort of asked us about putting a a bush up next to the footpath or something to stop uh, people, antisocial behaviour persons, fleeing through it. I don't know if that is that is is that because uh, I, I just wonder if anybody knew about that or is it has it just got convoluted on the way? Okay, the second one is uh, on the uh, the work done to remove uh, the caravan and. On the Ashbourne Lane car park, I'd like to congratulate uh, Stella Walters because uh, she's referred to as as a a public spirited person. I think, and it's and also as a multi a multi agency a multi agency team. She's, she's referred to, and I believe it was her and one one other who did all the litter picking there. So I would like to, uh, and someone I, I tend to run into in this house quite an often is the one who got got the. The, or, or the, the vehicles move and that. So uh, anyway, I'd like, I'd, I think Stella's very modest. I, she won't say it, so I'll say it for her. She's the first, one of the people referred to in that email. Thank you. Right, well, I, I say, uh, yes, I have seen part of that, of the second part. I think we'll have to ask for clarification on the first part, Chris, because... Um, I don't actually know. Sue, have, have you anything to add to that as Clark? You know, have you heard anything? Um, the only thing, we've had an email from Karen Green, but that's about um, sort of like an unofficial path that's been made, um, which she's asking us to, if we can block up um, because it's allowing um, people to sort of run away when they see the police coming. Yeah, that, that, that must be it then. I, I, it got a bit distorted by the time it reached me but it was from a good source it was just that it got a bit distorted so that's why I thought I'd raise it I'd raise it because it would be a police matter thanks thank Sue Jason you've got your hand up thank you uh, I'm unmuted now I'm uh, thank yeah, you Jay. Okay. I'd, just like, I'd just like to let you know that I'm currently having pardon they were can hear you. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm having difficulty with me uh, with me connection tonight. So it's, it, I'm, I'm in and out. So I just thought I'd let you I'd bring that to your attention in case you think I've, I've disappeared somewhere. I'm, I'm actually, I'm here, but, I, but we're buffering quite badly on both. And we've been having internet trouble all day. And I, and I think it's continued into the night. Right. Okay, Jace. Thank you for, for that. Uh, well, what we'll do is then, Chris, what I'll make the suggestion is we'll follow up on where that is, what uh, Karen Green's asked for, and we'll put it to uh, whether it's the parks budget, the amenities, or we'll, we'll have a look at where it needs to be dealt with. 
if that's all right with you. Yeah, he's nodding. So, yes, Sue. So we'll we'll follow that one up okay. with the police and find out. So with that, you say we have the now the open forum. You've told me we've got did you we've got one gentleman, Hugh Barton, which is to speak, and I can see his pictures just suddenly come up at the bottom of my screen there. So with that, I would like to ask Hugh to unmute himself and he has three minutes to speak on, I believe it's about the precept you wish to speak. Well, obviously no decision at this moment in time. We will take everything on board, what you say for our later discussion, but we will not ent ent be entering into the discussion at this point because it is an agenda item. So over to you, Hugh, you have three minutes. Very good, thanks Stuart, good evening everyone. Um, I just want to register my objection to the increase that I've seen um, on the agenda items for the precept uh, for the forthcoming financial year. Uh, this, this increase is, a, it looks like approximately 50%, but in real terms, the precept value has increased significantly with the 1,200 plus new homes that have been built in recent times and the associated Section 106 monies. Um, the only reason really that Chapel Vision when we produced the neighbourhood plan, uh, tolerated the excessive number of houses being built was the expectation that the increased revenue would bring value and amenity without the need for such a, a significant increase in precept. Uh, this proposed precept increase, it's incredibly bad timing. Uh, so many residents struggling with costs after nearly a year of COVID restrictions. Uh, many people can ill afford an increase to the precept and, and to levy this now, it's unreasonable. Uh, it's unjustified and it, it's really insensitive, I think. Um, the other point I'd like to make is that, you know, for many parishioners, the, the first they're going to know of this is, is when the council tax bill arrives in a few weeks. Um, the full scale of objection will become clear then, I think. So I, I really ask councillors to confirm what value and amenity the parish council would propose to deliver to residents by such a significant increase in the precept. Uh, the 58,000 or thereabouts figure for the memorial park equipment forward slash legal costs that's shown in the agenda, it, it seems to be by far the, the largest single item in the forthcoming budget. So, so which is it? Is it equipment or is it legal costs? Um, parishioners might be quite comfortable with the idea uh, of, of a slightly higher precept for equipment, but considerably less, less tolerant of big spending on legal costs. Um, as a minimum, uh, I may suggest the parish council owes us a breakdown on that figure. Uh, so really to sum up, I, I'm urging councillors to consider softer ways of funding their plans for the coming year. Uh, consider really your duty of accountability and note that big spends like this, they're gonna be watched very carefully. Do you really wanna be the councillors who will be remembered for spending tens of thousands of pounds on what, what may end up as being unavoidable legal fees? Thank you. Thank, is, that, is that everything here? You've yeah, done very well there, man. Just over two and a half minutes there. You've done very well. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for the uh, opportunity. Right. And I take it everybody was able to hear that. Nothing needs clarifying from you before we let uh, we continue. Obviously, as I said, that will be brought up when we discuss later. Sue, have we anybody else for the open forum? I think Mr. Belton was wanting to speak. You can see he's got his hand up. Ah, right. He's on. Yes. <laughs> I'm moving my screens as we speak. He's on the other screen. Uh, that comes under David Belton, I believe. Yes. Yes. Thank so, you am very I much. correct at that? Yeah. Ah, it comes onto the front screen now. You've spoken. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, what we, um, can I just ask what uh, subject is yours about, David? Please. Um, it's about pathway maintenance. Right. Well, obviously. Uh, we come on uh, later on. We come. We do have a piece on paths and footpaths and things like that. So obviously, once again, I don't think any discussion will take place now. You'll have the same chance as you. Your three minutes, and we'll listen to you, and it will be discussed under the pathways one later on. If that's all right, I understand. I, I may. I may wish to add a second item as well. But uh, to start with the pathways. Um, I live in Coombs and there's a large piece of work going on currently uh, on the Meverill Brook, which feeds the reservoir uh, with contractors uh, having established a fair size base um, 
to improve the drainage through the brook. Uh, speaking with some of those contractors, they made the point that whilst they've got all their equipment down there, perhaps there's an opportunity to do some improvement to the pathways around the reservoir, which we know are in very poor shape. I'm not sure which of those are under the rights of way of Derbyshire, which are local, which are indeed informal. But uh, the fact remains, there might be an opportunity whilst a six month project is going on in the vicinity of the reservoir to improve what are very, very, very poor paths. I've sent um, using the uh, get it done medium uh, a request to Derbyshire, uh, just saying there may be an opportunity to do something at this time, uh, whilst appreciating always that these projects need careful planning. Um, and it struck me to uh, ask yourself and councillor colleagues whether they can add any leverage to that request uh, with connections you will have in Derbyshire um, uh, to see if there's any opportunity that could be taken whilst the contractors are down there. Uh, that's it, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Well, you, you, were on the, you were just under two minutes there, so thank you very much. Uh, Chris, I see you've got your hand up. Uh, what is it for clarification? Clarification, basically, because I've been chair of the footpath group. Uh, yes, we, we, have, uh, we have had some emails, correspondence, me and David have, and uh, basically we're talking with the Canal Trust to try and get some work done there. Now, I'm not sure whether it's DCC doing the work on the river or, or, or the Canal Trust, so that, that I'm not quite sure. But the idea that we've been discuss, we discussing with the Canal Trust is that they've done a short path, part of the path with Crush Lake, which looks, looks very nice, and the whole idea is to extend that. And the whole idea is they've got a good, good working relationship with CMEX, who provide a lot of equipment and men, uh, and also some other organisations, and the whole idea is that we are, can, you know, subject to approval, but it's the, uh, also use our footpath grant, which is, you know, a reasonable amount of money towards that as well, and also to kickstart, kickstart it, because I think they've done this about three years ago, and they may need to do another patch, but with this, the idea is, I'd like this spring or summer to get the, get an, another bit done, it is an absolute quagmire there. Uh, at the best of times, uh, and it's such a lovely walk. But um, uh, from 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 this, Chris, I think ideally, um, I, I can be said now as opposed to later. Anyway, I think your footpath group should be actually saying which part and where it is, because I'm not sure myself. Just off the top of my head, I think Sue would need to do some work on this probably because I'm not sure that all the footpaths around all the reservoir are actually in our parish and all belong to us. That's all, sorted, that's all sorted Stuart. Ah right well they say I've not had any uh, dealings with this as you might gather by me saying that so I think a proper proposal would need to come back to the council from the footpath group for us to able to, to vote yeah, it's on. Not, it's already been in the minutes, but we're just talking to the Canal Trust but from what the impression I get Going through the Canal Trust is going to be a lot better quicker than Derbyshire County Council. Uh, you know, because they do tend... To, I know they've got equipment on site, and any sensible person would say, yes, do some work while you're there, but it can be very difficult. But uh, I will ask the footpath officer at, at the County Council. I, I will for, I'll forward him David, David's email, because that's like... The, person who it'll get to yeah. eventually when it when it's gone through all their system and I'll ask him to to reply to it yeah well I think that I think for David's point of view here we've heard what you've said we've heard what Chris has said obviously in support of you uh obviously not a, de a decision can't be made tonight on that one anyway mm. even later on in the meeting but what I can say is we can ask Sue to correlate some of this and they can when they have the footpath meeting, and it can come back to the full council for a, a, some form of decision of if there's any money or how we can help de help you deal with it. I don't think that uh, people don't want to help you. It's how it can be helped. I think is the answer from what I can gather on, on the straight one. Because I say this one is obviously off the hoof for me tonight. Is that all right with you, sir? Uh, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Jim. Right. Um, is there any other members of the 
public that wish to speak, Sue, or was that just the two? I don't know if there's anybody in the meeting who, who wishes can I, to Can I raise another one? Yeah, because you did only just use your two minutes. You have got a little bit. Yeah, I've seen as, as anybody. I can't, I can't see any other hands up anywhere. If anybody is, shout. No, right. Well, do you want to raise the second one then, uh, David? Well, then we're it's, doing? It's, not, it's not as important as matters of the precept, but um, so many of the roads around here in the recent weather um, have suffered from the amount of rain we've had. Um, I, again, I don't think this is necessarily a parish matter directly, except that we all live here uh, and you guys help represent us and push our case forward. The gullies and culverts, certainly around Coombs, and I've seen in other places like White, White Huff, all around this parish are sadly neglected and they all need a good sucking out. Um, I've again reported this to High Peak through the uh, Alliance uh, reporting line. Um, I did see a road sweeper respond to me a few weeks ago. Um, I guess they'll have a lot on, but I haven't seen a, 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 a gully clean around here for months, and we certainly could do with them. Now, whether that's anything that, again, through your good, good offices, you can push forward. Um, the, 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 common, the commonality here, again, with the footpaths is, you all know everybody's got exercise on the minds. They like to go out. Quite rightly, beautiful place to be out, and it's it's not very nice at all underfoot. No. Right. Well, thank you for that. What I I'll just come. I'll just say something, and I'll come to you, Nigel. I see you've got your hand up. Um, just to say to you, this. I know it sounds funny to say that it's an old chestnut, but it is something that always comes back to the parish council. Yes, it isn't our place to actually for, for to do it but to try and facilitate other people like the Borough Council, because they do it under contract to the Derbyshire County Council. It is actually County Council's problems. It's a County Council matter. But the main one is that we are finding in the rural, more rural areas like you're talking about, which we've spoken about the other week about the wash in different places, mm -hmm. the actual grass verges are growing over into the road and things can't even make it to the grid holes, whether they're covered up or not. So I think it's something, I think by the time we've finished this meeting, there will be actually a list of things we wish to write to the County Council on for, for dealing with, and I think that will be able to be added. So, um, Nigel, you had your hand up, and then I see Jason's put his hand up. Nigel yes. first. So, so um, uh, I, I know, David, you've, you've said that you've used the um, online reporting tools from Derbyshire County Council in the past. Um, I have had su some success with getting drains unblocked by using that, that reporting tool. So I, I had one during the recent flooding uh, Beckles Road and, and they came within a week so I, I think they they are quite quick off the mark if you report these ones. Okay well I've perhaps not given them quite enough time but uh, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Thank you. Jason you had your hand up. Yeah thank you Chair. Just listening to what um, uh, David said I, I, I did quite agree and I know that Nigel said that he's had some success but uh, as a parish I perhaps I, I think uh, we know if we got behind uh, David and, and the residents and wrote to the Derbyshire Council Council because when we was on our recent visit to Forge Road, you know that Chris is also having issues with gullies and grids and generally I think the parish is, 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 is in need of a good service. Yeah. Well, that actually leads me nicely on to one that I have got that has been put to me and a certain person can't be here tonight as such would I please bring up, which obviously is a is another part of the writing to uh, the county council, and it is a footpath as such. It's Barmerclough, as you will have noticed as you drive up and down Barmerclough, there's been several accidents and there's a great swathe of that that's all smashed and broken and all the railings are down and there's some orange board in there and a resident who walks up and down there, obviously walking the dog, like you say, are out and about because of the COVID and wanting their exercise, saying that that is pushing them nearer to the road and the bigger vehicles, it's making it dangerous. And as asked, would we actually bring up with the county about the Barmerclough 
fencing on the left hand side where the where the footpath is. Now I know Jason in the past you have actually been over there and cleaned up because it was a mess and everything. So you probably have seen that and noticed that and probably will reiterate what I'm saying there. And that's why I said I think we've got some other things that need to be passed on to the uh, county. Jason, you wish to reply? You've got your hand up. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm uh, I'm actually happy to take this one on as I've had, I've had uh, several attempts at getting this fixed. It is an eyesore. It has been an eyesore for a number of years. Well, one of the problems I'm having is finding a an authority or a body that's prepared to take ownership of it. But I will I will continue and I'll feed back at the next meeting if you like. Well, that that would be great. Thank you. That this is the you know this is the point to bring you to. And as it is the open forum, I've just one notification to let you know as such, which might be of helpful to people because it is sort of a police matter. It's a borough council matter and everything that the uh, I don't think know whether Sue's had notification as such yet. But because of so many people getting out and about as they did last year when it was nice and we're hoping this snow and everything will go away. There's a public space order being granted to the Borough Council with the police's intent, happiness and all the rest of it to do with wildfires that in the uh, areas that are owned by the Borough Council, that there will not be allowed, or the Peak Park, they will not be allowed to have these uh, th disposable barbecues or let off these uh, Chinese lanterns and things like that, which could cause a fire in the warm weather they they obviously are preempting what this year might bring but it might be something that as a council when that is all written up we want to look at because of our parks and open spaces it's just a notification to let people know that that's going through at the moment can i just come in you've actually got the details in correspondence oh have we well there you go you see i'd missed that bit that must be on the other side of this page Yes, we have. I apologise. That's me. I've missed that in my speed reading of this. Lots and trying to sort everything out. Not much going on. I apologise. But anyway, that the, we now know about that. And I say it gives you a chance to think about it when we get to the letter and see if anybody wants to do anything about it. Right. Uh, if nobody else has got their hands up for anything for the open forum, we'll go through the minutes of quite a few meetings that happened in January. And then we'll go to considering any matters arising and we'll go through them one by one. So um, to receive the minutes of the full council meeting held on the 5th of January, not to actually go through anything. Is there any spelling mistakes or anything that people wish to alter? Or are there, can I have those uh, agreed as a true record? I'll propose them. Thank you, Nigel. Is everybody in favour of those as a true record? Yeah, I've got two hands, two noddings. Yes. Three hands. Yeah. OK. Uh, receive the minutes of the planning committee. Obviously, I was not there because I'm on the borough. Uh, are they a true record? Yeah. Stella's nodding and proposed. And Nigel seconded. So thank you for that one. Um, minutes of the personnel committee. Yeah, uh, those are true record. I'll yes, pose I, these. Thank you, Nigel. And uh, Jason seconded. Thank you. Uh, minutes of the amenities committee held on the 20th of January. Uh, is it a true record? Is everybody happy? Yeah, I've got Jason's hand and Stella's hand. Everybody happy? Thank you. Um, minutes of the town hall committee held on the 20th which obviously I will propose. And have we a second? Thank you, Stella. And everybody happy? Yeah. So the minutes of the communications committee held on the 20th as well. Yeah. Stella and Nigel. Yes. Two hands, a nod and a hand there. Yeah. And then the FNGP committee, which I'll propose as, as a true record. And then... We'll go through, I think, with that. Oh, no, we've got another one. We had the Friday, didn't we? Uh, the amenities held on the 26th of January. Uh, Jason, yes, you happy with those as minutes? Because I know you've done some work since that, so you'll probably want to answer those, yeah? 
Yeah. Yeah. To, to matters arising, I think, from these. Can we move on and, and, and take it from matters arising? Yeah. 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 That's fine. So I'll reverse back through background now to uh, the minutes of the uh, full council, which obviously at the moment are draft and we ratify them tonight. These were on the 5th of January. Are there any matters arising on page one? No. Are there any matters arising on page two? Yes, I've got a couple, please. Yes, Sue, um, while you're there. Just to say, um, we have made the application for the grip bin and the wash, but we've not heard anything back from DCC yet. And um, the next bit, which was the adoption of the red telephone box in Bagshaw, um, it actually, we, we did get the written consent from the landowner, who then got um, a copy of the plan from the land registry, and wasn't sure that it was actually on his land. Uh, we've gone back to, to BT and we have confirmed with Derbyshire County Council that the phone box is actually on public highway. So that means that the parish council will be able to directly adopt the box. Um, so BT is sending the paperwork through for us to do that. Right, it's just a case of land ownership and then we, we can do it whereas we thought the landowner had to do it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we can continue with that, right? Yeah. Brill, any, uh, anything else on page two we were on? Sorry, just the fire alarm box has been fitted in the town hall. I was just going to say, I, was, I rang uh, Emma up the other day and the fire alarm box was being worked upon and it sounded terrible in the back with it all going off. But yes, I'm glad that's been done, which is a good start. So with that, we'll move on to page three. Obviously, I'm not going to announce, say anything about loss of earnings at the moment because you've got a piece later to come up on that. Anything else apart from uh, the shutters? So have we got a date yet for fitting them? No, we, we placed the order, but we've not got a date yet for it to be done. Right. Anything from anybody else on page three? Moving on to page four. Um, yeah, I've got something. Um, yeah. Le Lex Leisure have offered to do um, a virtual meeting with councillors if they would like to do that. And um, Derbyshire County Council said that it, they would try and send somebody to that meeting as well. Um, so I, I don't know if you want me to arrange that. Well, my answer would be yes, please. And I can see Jason with his hand up and nodding away like good or with Stella with her thumb up. So I think uh, I think we can take that as read so that the answer is yes, please. OK. Just say something, Stuart. Uh, yes, Chris? When DCC say they'll try and send someone, uh, Jason, would you prefer a definite, you know? Yes, Sorry? Yes, yes please. So maybe the, to arrange a date when DCC are 100% available, if you know what I mean, because they're probably more important, you know, because they're... Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll say we, we can organise that. And then is there anything on page five? Because I know a couple of the other things that are here will, will be coming up there on the agenda. Right, just to say, you will see when we get round to the uh, payment of accounts that the money has gone through for the 48 quid for buying the Christmas lights. So that's just an update on that on page five. We have actually done that. And then page six. No hands up, nothing else on that. So with that, that's the minutes of the full meeting. We'll move on to the... Change my pages over. We've gone to the planning committee now. Let's find the right piece of paperwork. Uh, Chris, over to you with this one as chair of the uh, planning committee. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, the main thing was the very first one, the Wade Holmes one, the, the uh, development of Forge Mill at, uh, uh, at uh, Light of them. I mean, that was the big one. 
uh, the, the problems there with lots of things flooding and also the Section 106 agreement. And if we sort of put a lot of thought into, we want to sort of work with everybody and get stuff done, I think. So, but that was the big item and we did a sort of a big uh, side visit as well that on it. So, you know, that, that was, you know, so, but other than that, uh, I think it's all pretty straightforward. Any comments from anybody else on that? Are you happy with those as uh, the minutes as they are? Uh, Nigel. Uh, there's, a, there's a typo after Ruth George. There's a couple of letters gone, gone awry there. Where are you on that? What, what? The council would request Ruth George MP to, oh, to make representations to the officers. Yeah, right, OK. It's how quick you read it, isn't it? Yeah. That's all right, Sue? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Right, thank you. Right, get me next piece of paper, which is the personnel committee. Yeah, um, there's, there's, oh, nothing you, to, uh, there's nothing to really say about this. Um, it was all held behind closed doors, as, as every um, staff, uh, every meeting discussing staff is. So um, uh, you've got the bare bones of what happened there. And uh, that's all to say. Yeah, and all, all I will say with it to, to you as chairman, well done for becoming chairman of that. And I presume when we get some answers to some of these things, we'll be having another personnel committee to discuss them. You'll you'll arrange it, yes? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Right. Now we're on to the amenities committee. Thank you, uh, Chair. Over to I'm you, sorry. Jason. Yeah, thank you. If I could just uh, quickly go through one or two things. Um, so... 21 stroke 242. I just wanted to bring your attention to a fabulous piece uh, by uh, uh, Ruth, Councillor Ruth George, actually, who's, who's um, getting stuck into the Derbyshire County Council, hoping to get a share of the money that's been put to one side for this, this scheme. I thought that's, that's worth bringing to the attention of everyone here. Uh, on um, 21244, four, can I just confirm with the councillors present, please, that we we did actually ask our assistant clerk to get three quotes for, for the stretch of wall on the um, down by the LA's allotments. Yeah, so we're okay with that. So that's confirmed. Thank you. Uh, and similar 21 stroke 248, that uh, we, we are happy to receive three quotes for the recycled picnic benches. We, we do have one in Coombs, but yeah, okay, thank you again for that. And um, finally, there were just two, two pieces of correspondence that we, that we uh, received. Uh, sorry, there, there were several pieces of correspondence, but two in particular. We've, um, we, since the meeting, we've actually contacted the people that have written to us uh, and explained what was actually going on, and they've received the information favourably. Uh, and um, all things are quiet on the Western Front, so to speak. And that just about concludes everything from, from uh, those minutes. Sure. Thank you. Any questions for Jason on that? Because all I was going to say is there is another one that was at the amenities committee on the 26th of January. It says in here as well. I've got two written down on my yeah. agenda. I don't know why. That Stella. There the, there the uh, points has just gone through as well. I think he's put them both together. That's what I was just going to say. That that in incorporates the points that you'd put together. Yeah. Because we're going to say there was quite a lot to, well, quite a lot happened in that in action plans, wasn't there? Are yeah, we all right with? Sorry, Jeff, yeah, Jason. If we just if we just add as well, actually, that whilst um, we we spent a good ninety minutes plus speaking about a lot of things on Friday. And I think it's worth pointing out that um, whilst not a great deal seems to have happened since the last meeting, we, we've been we, we've been putting the building blocks in for us to, to move forward quite quickly early in 2021. So we should see significant gains very early in the year. Right. 
Thank you for that. Right, well, now we come to the main pile of papers that you all received, which I think, I'm just going to let me get them in the right order, uh, which is the easiest way to go through these? I'm just having a look here, right, because, yeah, I'm upside down with what I've got. We'll start with um, the amenities that was held on the 20th with the budget setting, which is the first one for Jason. Yeah, that's the one. Have you found your paperwork, Jace? I, I have, yeah, yeah. Right, so over to you with your budget one for the amenities. Oh, just bear with, me, bear with me one moment. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'll say this I've is the meeting. I've got a paper tonight, yeah? <laughs> so um, this is the first time that I've actually done this, chair. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm giving you... So what would you like... How would you like to start this? Well, the simple thing is, you've obviously, because of the meetings that we've had and that Friday afternoon one, the main part of yours for your budget is, it's basically, you're saying uh, here what money you would like to be spending on what and where in the next 12 months and what, you know, what okay. you've uh, been asking for as such as a... a I know it's all five of us. This is the thing where this is very awkward. Normally, you see, when we've got the full council of 13, you'll only have half of them on this committee and half will be on the town hall and then you're explaining everything. But as it is, I think um, it's probably quite self-explanatory to the five of us, which will probably make it quicker and easier, unless there's anything you wish to say about it. J uh, oh, Nigel's got his hand up for you, so I'll let you deal with Nigel. Yeah. Nigel, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think we've we've all been at the budget meeting. Um, all the papers of the budget meeting are on the website and have gone out with the um, agenda packs, so are available to the public. Uh, I, I think Hugh, at the in the public forum, struck the right note that um, we we need to look at um, how much. Um, Additionally, we are charging in council tax and justify that tax rise to our neighbours. Um, the, the rise will ensure that an additional £60,000, roughly, is spent on the parks and an extra £2,000 will be spent on grip bins and litter bins. There's a desperate need to spend more money on play equipment. For 26 consecutive months, safety inspection reports were ignored, telling the council to repair play equipment. And we must never ever let that happen again. Now, Hugh has come up with a good point, which is that it's a bad time to raise taxes. However, Parish tax makes up a tiny proportion of, of the full council tax, less than 1% of the total. And it will remain a tiny proportion after this rise, adding less than half a percent to the council tax bill. Of course, some people in our community will carry on paying nothing because they receive council tax rebate. Yeah. Can I just stop you there for a second, Nigel, please? Can I just get to the end? Because, uh, and, and then, then you can have your say, and then everyone else can have their say. The parish tax has not risen in 12 years and has not kept track with inflation. In real terms, the council has been spending less per year per household. Setting the tax at £54 a year will mean that households will pay the same as their neighbours in Chinley and less than those in Peak Forest. In Whitehuff, a bit further down the road than the old hall, 
households currently pay £17 more on one side of the road than on the other. In Sparrow Pit, by the old Wanted Inn, households pay £30 more on one side of the road than the other. This increase will simply mean that chapel residents pay the same as their neighbours in Chinley and Bugsworth parishes. Borough and county councils have made cut after cut in services over the past decades. Parish councils are forced to take up the slack. Where we see a need and other tiers of government will not act, we have a moral duty to step in. Across Derbyshire, over half of the grit bins are funded by parishes, whereas in chapel it's less than one-fifth. The reason that chapel dove holes, Coombs, Whitehuff, the Wash, lack grit bins is because parish councillors have been unwilling to fund them. That should change, and this is the start. Right. Can I come back now, Nigel, and say... I was going to go through people when we got to item 14, which is to agree the precept, which is what you've just said. I was actually going through the minutes and asking Jason if he had budgeted his money where he wanted it to go. In the respect of on here, there was the £2,000 extra put in to cover grit bins and rubbish bins. Then I was going to go through the... Uh, town Hall one where we'd added on for a thousand pound because of the roof repairs we need to do. Obviously, there's a thousand pound for the magnetic door closers, and obviously, what Chris had brought up when we'd held the functions in there that the vent in the main hall roof is blocked up. We put money in to cover that so that we can open that as such. Which I'd also at uh, the budgeting part suggested there were some other bits to deal with in the park, which would have led us, led us on to the full F and GP finance, which puts all that together, which adds up the totaling money, which brings you to what we have just been talking about. So I, I felt you were just jumping the gun slightly, Nigel. That was all before we'd had our say about the, the things that we wanted to do. That was all. I'm sorry, sorry to say it like that, but uh, when Jason had asked, how do we normally go through this? I was just following it through how we normally have, you see. And that was what I say. So apologies if you feel that I, I stepped in there. But uh, that's what uh, I wanted to say, that there were things that we'd planned within the town hall and within the communications and within the parks budget that we need to do in this next year anyway. And money was going to be allocated to those but as we got to the f and gp part at the end to do the actual precept we never returned to the amenities budget to actually earmark a load of things you just said exactly what you said there that you wanted to put it at 54 pound and uh, put it for the park for equipment and legal fees which is obviously what hugh barton had read because that's what he mentioned earlier, which is at the bottom of the page there. So the question I think that needs, before we actually go to the vote here, I think with what you've said, Nigel, you've, you've said your piece there. I think everybody else should have their chance to say their piece. We should be able to answer Hugh as such with this, and then we should actually do a vote. Now, obviously, uh, I can see that uh, Jason's got his hand up. So I'll start with Jason next then, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, so so one, of the, one of the problems I had were at, the, at the beginning of, of, of this particular section was that you asked me to, to discuss the, the, the budget for, for the actual park. Uh, and if you remember at the meeting when... Um, we, we were discussing the budget. We did say that we would come back at the end of that budget mm. and discuss the amenities. Okay. Um, but we didn't. Correct. So, so um, difficult for me to, 
to, to say much more. I, I mean, I can I can read from the sheet, sir, Chair. I, I, I can I can read out that everybody's got access to. Um, you know, key points being that the council have confirmed that the concurrent function grant for 21-22 is fifty six thousand seven hundred and twenty six. Um, the clerk advised that there is some there is S106 money for the development on Long Lane and Manchester Road how much we, we're not quite sure I think um, Sue is in the process of trying to find out that, that, that uh, figure um, we did agree that the uh, bequest that was given to us in uh, I believe 2018 would be used to help purchase some um, picnic benches and some um, ordinary seating uh, benches. And um, it was noted that, that the earmark reserved for allotments should the council look to reopen. I think that was raised from five to seven. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and really, um, the rest of it is, is as you see. But until we actually finish what we started I wasn't quite sure where to go Chair. No well that was the thing we never returned to that because I know and this is uh, and I'm saying I know everybody knew at the meeting but obviously the public here today I had mentioned and we did talk about um, the new mower or whatever and how much that would cost and we agreed to look at the tarmac uh, scheme I think that's probably what Chris has got his hand up for because he wanted to mention something on that as well. But we were looking at other funding for some things as well, as is what we normally do through the year. Chris, you've got your hand up. Uh, assuming there is some proposal to for, for a new, for, for, for whatever uh, precept there will be, I would like to propose amendment to a proposal which has probably not yet <laughs> happened yet, but to the extent that we need to have like, while we're setting the precept at this moment in time, the budget needs to be sort of fine tuned. So we should have maybe a mini budget meeting in, in a month, just to sort of sort out more sub -eds of of the budget, you know, is, is my so that would be my sort of proposal to what uh, my amendment to what it uh, proposal, so that we can sort of more pigeonhole stuff. Well, I think in a way that's going on down the lines of what Hugh was asking in the respect of equipment and legal fees. Which heading are you putting it under, or whatever, so that we know where it's being spent? I call it, um, you know, ring fencing it for a certain item. Nigel, you wish to come back. Yes. Um, so I, I understand Hugh's concern about this, this big pot of money, which is for play equipment or legal fees. Yeah. At, at the moment, I mean, the, the discussion that took place at the budget meeting was essentially that we needed more money to be spent in the park. And, it, and, and part of the reason for that was to um, resolve complaints with the neighbours around the park. Now, every one of the councillors in this parish council wishes to spend 100% of this money on new play equipment in the park and 0% on legal fees. But essentially, we have no control over what percentage is spent in either of those places. Um, so I, I, I'm optimistic that the, the council can come to uh, a, a satisfactory arrangement with the neighbours where we are spending nothing on legal fees and everything on play equipment. But it's essentially out of the council's control. Right. Um, can I... Can, well... If everybody's happy there with what Jason said about the amenities budget and with the answers we've got there at this moment, I've mentioned what I'd said 
about the town hall budget for the extra things that we need to do as such. It brought us to a figure as such, which I know I had written it down and uh, we said and mentioned it at the time, but I think for the purpose of this meeting, <coughs> I need to clarify what I would said. And then obviously with what Nigel's just said about his £54 as such. I had come up with a budget, as you know, of a 5% increase, which would have brought us in approximately £6,000, which would have allowed us to put £3,000 towards the town hall and £3,000 towards the park with the reserves that we have got, would have been able to do a lot of the jobs we wanted to do. It would have kept, obviously, the park keepers employed because we've already agreed at a previous meeting to keep them employed till March as such, which normally is seasonal, but, uh, well, we really need them because everybody's out in the park and using them. And as it was said, we need extra bins and seats for them to, uh, for people to congregate because of the COVID that people are using the park. And that would have brought about a £1.50 increase on the council tax, which is what I'd put forward at the time. And I know uh, things moved on from that. But I just wanted to say, you know, that there was a, a reason why that was that and how we've normally gone through. But obviously, Nigel, you've um, come up with this uh, proposal, as you might say, which is taking us on to number 14. You have had your say in the respect to for the £54. Uh, I have done a little bit of soul searching and all the rest of it. I have been party to the zero increases in the past. I do appreciate what you said about the extra houses brought the money because over the last 10 years, it's taken us from a precept of 100,000 coming in to 125,000 coming in. So we have had an increase, not a, a complete loss. Um, and at this moment in time, the £54 going up from 36 to 54, which is a 50, almost 49.96% increase, I do, do feel when people are using food banks, clothes banks, and we now have a debt advice surgery that's opening up because people are in debt. I just feel for the people of Chapel that this is a too much too far in one fell swoop. Possibly I could agree that over the years uh, we perhaps should have put a bit on bit by bit and not, uh, you know, not to left it completely to zero. But I do feel that I have to say, I think it's too much, too too quick, all in one fell swoop. And as for the legal fees that you're talking about, yes, we do want it all on equipment. We do need the equipment. It would be nice to spend all that in the park. But the legal fees in the past, when things do come up like that, because we are a government body, there are other ways of raising these for the, the money for these sort of things through either loans through banks or loans through the Public Works Loan Board or through other councils, because I know other councils have got in a mess with their precept in the past, and the borough council has sort of helped them out until they pay it back. So I am very sceptical about the, uh, the amount that uh, you're proposing, but that's my saying, uh, you know, there are other ways of doing things, and we do go for grants and everything. So I just worry too much to, you know, in, uh, in this time that we are at. Jason, you have your hand up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so, so we, we seem to have moved on from 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 my my uh, my budget, if you like. So, so, so I wouldn't want to 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 propose this tonight, given everything that, that that's just happened at this moment in time. And um, what I would say is, is I've listened to you, Barton. Uh, and I've listened to yourself, Stuart, and I've also listened to Nigel. And um, whilst I am not against the proposal that Nigel uh, has put to the council, uh, I find myself, you know, that I do, in many ways, I do support it. But what I would ask is for a, a, an extension for us to, to get together in a similar vein to what Chris has just said and not drag this out, but just so that we can. The next time we sit in front of the, 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 the parish, I'm able to tell them that this is a pot of money for this particular action. This is a pot of, 
got some money for this particular action, and they and I can answer the questions that, that you as put to the council tonight. I wouldn't want this to drag on a month. You know, I I, I don't know the 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 um, uh, what the process would be, chair, but I, I would I would ask for a stay of ex execution for a week, two weeks, just to get all my facts together and then come back. Well, I can answer part of that for you. I will get Sue to answer, answer that officially for you <coughs> because, obviously, Stu, Sue is the responsible finance officer for the parish. The book stops with her with a lot of these organisational things like that. But on speaking to Mark Trillo and all the rest of it, the rules are and the legalities are we have to set a budget. We have to give it in, as I said previously, in time for the borough council to set their budget to be able to do the rate bills that go out to every household. And if I'm not mistaken, and Sue correct me if I'm wrong, I think we have to have our budget in by the 5th of March as such. I think that's when they want it in no, from us. No, Am I right, Sue? No, the 5th of February. Oh, sorry, I said the wrong month. Sorry, we have to have it in by the 5th of February, which is Friday of this week. So unfortunately, well, I think that's, yeah, we're on the second Friday of this week. So unfortunately, Jason, this is where we start having the trouble that we can't um, move on by a week or whatever. You know what I mean? We're, we're struggling. We are time constrained by the law. So I'll, does Sue want to say any more to that? Uh, no, um, the deadline was the 5th of February. Um, I suppose we could ask if, if there's a possibility to have an extension. I, I, I couldn't say whether that would be granted or not. So that uh, does throw the cat amongst the pigeons there, Jason, as such on that one. So... I, I, I appreciate exactly what you're saying and I appreciate what Chris has said there about putting it to things. And I do think it needs putting down better than just equipment and legal fees as such because, you know, it's uh, the I think the auditor will probably say, well, have you used it on equipment or have you used it on legal fees or whatever? And we'll have to prove that at the end of this financial year. So... Um, I, what I was going to say now is we move to 14, which is obviously all about the precept. Nigel's had some to say. I've had some to say. You have as well. Stella, you haven't said anything as such yet about the precept. Do you, do you wish to unmute and have anything to say on it? I'm, uh, I'm kind of stuck because I agree with what you said, but I also know that legal fees, if we spend all our money on legal fees, then there'll be no work done on the park. And I know you say it's grants to take on legal fees if needed, but then you're just getting in more debt if you're borrowing more money and you have to pay it back. Uh, but yes, I agree. Maybe we should try and come to a halfway mark or something. I mean, I did agree with Nigel because I think the skate park, the mugger, child's play area all needs quite a lot of money spending on it to get it to the right uh, place you know so it's in completely good working order but I also know we've got this hanging over our head with the legal fees and it's a scary one because these legal fees you know I mean we're just five councillors this all came up while we were, became councillors it's been going on longer hasn't it Jason, you've got your hand up again. Yeah, I, I think I think it's important that um, I, I get this point across that, that I am not in any way against the proposal of Nigel. Uh, I, I, I fully understand what Nigel is proposing. I understand where he's coming from, uh, I, and, uh, and, and 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 many parts of me find myself in complete agreement. However, given what what uh, an ex councillor um, spoken about, and I have briefly touched upon this in mail to, 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 to a couple of the councillors. Um, having listened to what an ex councillor said, um, and listened to what Hugh said, I would be more comfortable in, in asking for a, a, a slight delay so that when we came back, it would be more black and white where, where the money was going to be allocated. 
However, if I'm vo- if if I have to vote tonight, I will vote. Right, uh, Chris. Have you anything else to say, or can I <clears throat> ask Sue how, where we stand? Uh, well, the mainly is that whatever we do, we've got to try and give value for money. I know this. I know the parish council has been underfunded for years, and there's a lot needs doing, and. Obviously, we need to do something about that. And, you know, you see people skidding around when there's no grippings where they should be and stuff like that. And uh, and some of the state of the playground equipment, it it is, you know, uh, it's, you know, so whatever we do, it's got to be something, we've got to have a substantial increase, whether it's, you know, come what may, you know, whether it's a compromise figure or not, but this, you know, the, I mean, we've got, what, we've got 850,000 pounds worth of play equipment in, in the parish. And now I don't know, uh, all I know is about office equipment. We have, we have to put aside 15% of that value each year for maintenance. You know, if you have a maintenance contract, I think, even if you say 10% for the play equipment or even 5%, we're probably not even reaching half a percent for the maintenance budget. And, and it shows, you know, the through the complaints, but the, also the fact that we don't have the thing to kickstart, you know, joint projects and that, you know. So it is something we need to address. Uh, uh, and... Whatever I mean, play with figures. What is it? You know, what we're going from thirty-six to fifty-four. What is halfway forty-five? You can, you can all. It it does. We do need, but we do need to sort of address the shortfall. And the fact is that it's like sort of all this equipment's probably getting late through its life. And we need to maintain it and make plans for eventual replacement. Anyway, I've said a bit. Jason, you've got your hand up again, because I say I think the majority of this is revolving around what happens in the park. And as you are chair of the amenities in the park, you've got your hand up. You again. Thank you, chair. Yeah. So so um, on the face of it, um, you know, it's been it's been broadcast that, that, that we're, we're hoping to increase the preset by forty nine percent, and and that figure itself is is put out there to, to put the frighteners on people. Forty nine percent seems like a huge increase. In real terms, it, it's a, it's about one pound fifty a month on a bandy property, if, if, if I'm right. So so what what whilst that that, that the the, the increase in itself is is not some what whilst it does concern me it's not quite as large as what other people are trying to make it out to be however it, it's it's been able to to stand in front of the, the parishioners and tell them where that money's going to go um, it, it is the part that's just holding me back tonight right well with that uh Nigel's got his hand up, and then I'll go to Sue and see where we stand legally before I go to sorting out a, a vote or a decision, because something a decision somewhere has to be made. Nigel. Um, so I, I've heard councillors' concerns, and, and councillors are deeply concerned about the amount that could possibly be spent on legal fees. Like I said, you know, we have no control over how much we are going to be charged in legal fees. All we have control over is the amount of money we put aside, either for fixing the play equipment or going to court. And at the end of it, we'd probably end up having to fix the play equipment anyway. Or it's it's possible that that's the case. I, I think... You know, I've, I've heard what people are saying tonight. And, and why, you know, why don't we fix 
the amount that we will spend out of this additional money on legal fees. But then it is rather silly because we're going to, if we end up getting to the limit of that, we're going to have to spend that money anyway. So I'm happy for us to set a limit of whatever amount on legal fees, but it's a sham. I, I tend to agree that that's a, an unfortunate term of phrase, sham or whatever, and setting legal fees because they are open-ended. But Sue, where now? Now we've heard from everybody. Where do we stand? legally because of the 5th of February and what we've got to put in. What what have we got to do by law? Okay, well, you need, you need to set the amount that you want to precept. Uh, I mean, obviously, you were all at the budget meetings and you were yep. at the Finance Committee and that was the um, sort of recommendation you made on that amount, um, giving them um, a parish rate on a bandy for £54. Um, so I guess um, on this agenda item, somebody needs to make a proposal. Right, well, just before we go to that, uh, so that it's known, I have spoken to Mark Trillo, and it is a case of with the Borough Council, it has to be a named vote at the Borough Council because they are the ones that collect the money uh, for everybody. So normally it's named. But as a parish council, it, uh, there's nothing in the rules that says it has to be named. But a councillor can ask for the, uh, to the amount, the uh, be recorded. So I will be asking for a recorded vote on whatever the proposal is. So that it's there and people know what the recorded vote is. So with that... Nigel, you've got your hand up. Mr Chairman, I, I recommend that we... Uh, I, I propose that we accept the recommendations of the Budget Committee and we set a pre precept, precept of £187,110, which will be a bandy tax rate of £54. Right. Do we have a seconder for that proposal? I very reluctantly second it. I just don't think we've got any ch choice. We've got things to sort out and we need to sort them. And we're still not, you know, it's still very reasonable. You know what I mean? We're not, it, it's past problems of course, of course this, but I very reluctantly second it. It is a very difficult situation. Right. Have we any other motions to consider or proposals to consider? It's very difficult when there's only five of us. If you have the larger yeah. council, it's very difficult to, you know, somebody, because obviously I'd put, a, I put forward the 5% uh, proposal. I've got it written down, but that fell last week at the, at the meeting. So I don't think there's even any point in trying to bring that up again. So, we have a proposer and a seconder for the motion of our 21-22 precept being, I know Nigel said the figures there, but it's £54 per year per bandy property, which is an increase of 49.96% to whatever it was. Could I go through you and ask whether you're for that or against that? And then it will be a, as classed as a, a recorded vote. Nigel, are you... I'm for the motion. Thank you. Chris? For the motion. Jason? He's thinking. Uh, while he's thinking, he hasn't unmuted himself yet. Stella? I I don't want to, but I know we've got to, because otherwise we could lose the party equipment completely, and I'm not willing to do that. So I will vote for it. Well, as you might have gathered with me putting another budget together and the way I've spoken tonight, and I think it's far too much, far too soon for the people of Chapel. And uh, what be, I shall be voting against this. Uh, Jason. 
I'm, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm, I'm prepared to vote tonight yet. So you're abstaining, is what you're I saying? Am. So we have I am. three for we have three for it, one against it, and one abstention. Well, technically, by the rules, that means that has been passed, whether we like it or not. Now, all I will say from that is, I shall be watching and I shall be following up your suggestion, Chris, there, that we do try and earmark some of this money into certain places when we have some other budget meetings as we go forward. Nigel, you have your hand up. Can I propose that we put a statement up on the Parish Council website, which I sent around earlier today? Right, well, I do have one caveat now we've got that far, Nigel. I did see what you'd sent around earlier. I did manage to read that. I haven't read everything, but I did manage to read that. I do feel that um, the councillors that here should vote on it because the one bit that is missing from what you, the statement that you've made, you makes no um, what's it mention of the likes of how the vote has been tonight, who has, who is not happy with it, and who has abstained as it turns out. I think the statement could be reworded to more formalise it. From what was said, from what's been said here tonight, your hands up again, Nigel. Yes, and then I'll come to Jason. I, I think we, we have now come to a decision. There is a collective responsibility in this council, and we should not emphasise the split. Uh, now that the decision has been taken, we should move onwards and all come behind the, the next budget. Jason, you put your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jay. I, I, to be fair, I'm, I was just going to reiterate what Nigel just said. Recent training at HR said that once these decisions are made, then, then um, we have a collective responsibility as a group to, uh, to move forward with that decision. And so, so um, highlighting councillors who have abstained, who voted for and against it, I don't, I don't think is in the spirit of that training. Fair enough. I, I, I was putting that out there so that people could have their say on what they think of what uh, Nigel has written. Uh, Stella first, and then I've got um, Chris. Seeing as you've said it's recorded who has voted and who hasn't, then it doesn't need to actually go in the statement because it will be in the recording anyway that you voted against it, Jason, abstained. abstained. But I do go back on what I'm saying is I didn't do it to try for any other reason than the fact that we need the money on the park. I don't, well, and we'll have a shortfall if we don't rise. It's £17 a year and I'm not working at the moment and I can't really afford it. But £17 a year is a fair amount in my eyes. Chris, you had your hand up as well. Uh, well, I basically agree with everything everybody's just said, and uh, I'm happy. If, I think probably Nigel's statement he said around is probably fair, fair, and you know, fair, and we should. And I'm happy to go with that. You know, we need to let the public know our decisions. Uh, you know, and uh, best practice. And I'm happy, I am quite happy with with the statement he's drafted. Right, so Nigel's drafted a statement. He's proposing it. You're happy with it. Uh, I'm not 100% happy with it, but as has just been said, we've got to pull together. We've all got to be behind it now. That's what the decision is. We've got to work to that. So I suppose the answer is, Jason, you've got your hand up again. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Chair. Uh, I, 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 I'm not. I'm, I'm not prepared to accept the fact that you're just not happy with it. If you're not, if you you, know, you have a right to be heard, Chair. So, so um, if you've got something that you'd like to add to that statement, then, well, then uh, at least let's get it out in the air. In your well, tonight. well, the simple thing is, I've been very busy on other things today. That only came through this afternoon. I haven't had chance to word, read through every single wording on that. I haven't got it printed out. If I turn my tablet, my iPad off now to have a look what's written there, you'll lose me from the meeting and that's the end of it. I can't say yes or no to that statement as we sit here now because I might not agree with all the wording. 
So how do I go about that? I just have to, you know, it's going to be 4-1 anyway, even if I don't agree with the wording. So what's the point in prolonging it? Jason. Well, I, I, I disagree, Chair. I think that it, your, your, uh, your opinion's valid. Uh, and and um, if, the, if the, the statement didn't go on for 24 hours while you looked at it, would that cause any harm? Well, that, that's a sensible one to ask. How do people feel that uh, if I have a look at that and get back to Nigel and yourselves tomorrow with any alterations? Nigel, you have your hand up. Can, can Well, th there will be damage because I, I can see two people who are going to go immediately onto Facebook and start posting about this tonight. Um, so I... Would it be acceptable to you if I added a single sentence, which was, this was not a unanimous decision? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you've got it written in it. Can I just say, for obviously for obvious reasons of what you've just said, and that's what I'm thinking in my mind, yeah, this was not a unanimous decision. And if you wish to... Because people don't know what the deliberations have been, do they? I think it should be a case of, if you wish to see the deliberations, please watch the video or something like that. So that they can yeah. actually sit through and watch it themselves if they want to know how we've deliberated it. Because I feel that we've only got a few people here. There's 9,000 people plus in chapel who are all going to be affected by this. Now, the people who are here tonight obviously know what we've deliberated and heard what we've been deliberating for nearly the last hour, which is a very important thing. And it's a case of if we said it was not a unanimous decision and if you wanted to know what the deliberations were, please watch the video and put the you have one of those hashtag things of how you find it. I'd, I'd, I would prefer that. Yes. So they can actually make their own mind up. Is that, is that a reasonable thing to say? Yes. So how about I suggest the following wording? This was not a unanimous decision. Um, and then we post the link to the uh, YouTube video, which should appear sometime early tomorrow morning mm -hmm. on the Parish Council Facebook page. Yeah, because I think they need to be able to evaluate for themselves. OK. So, um, if, if is everyone else happy with that? Yeah, well, I've got two nods, Jason. Yeah, thumbs up or a nod. Or, yeah, and away. Yeah. Okay. To move this forward. Right. Well, sorry that's taken the best part of an hour, but it is a very important part of our year, this one. Right. Have you managed to get all that, Sue? Yes, thank you. Right, well, we will obviously move on to number 15 now, the Town Hall, which you will have received your loss of earnings sheet, as you might say, which does look a little bit better this time, funnily enough, because, as you will see from that, we've received another £6,000 from the Borough Council. So, with the chances of the losses going further in April we probably as you can see here, what we've received as Covid grants and what we've lost will probably about balance out which is, an, which is very fortunate that that's what the government and the borough and everybody's done but it is a shame that the Covid has had to work this way um, in with that obviously We've uh, just decided we, we, you know, we're spending some money anyway on the town hall, and let's hope we do get out of COVID and can start getting these sort of figures brought back into the uh, town hall as a whole. Uh, we've done the fire alarm box, as was said earlier. They are going to quote for us for the magnetic door catches so that that can be safer, and we are going to look for people to um, do the ventilation that Chris has mentioned about in the apex of the roof. So is there anything else on the town hall that we wish to update them on, Sue? Uh, no, just to say, I think we're going to get another £238 grant on top of what we've got. 
Right. Oh, that's very nice. Is there anything from anybody else on the town hall at the moment? Are you happy we move on? Right. So we move on to number 16. Then. I think we think I'm right. If I turn the page right. Yep. Uh, a motion from Councillor Sizeland, which states the council undertakes to explore the possibility of installing a publicly accessible defibrillator at the town hall. Now, I will just give a little bit of history for for the people ben people's benefit here. This has slightly been looked at in the past, and it's a good while ago, I admit. So things might have changed. Um, the respect of they said when it was said in the town hall last time, uh, it didn't say the uh, accessible bit like you've just said, Chris, because it was for, they said it wouldn't be available to the public to use because it'd be locked away most of the time, well, half the time because the town hall isn't always open and that. So uh, do you want to clarify and say where you'd like to take this motion? Yes, uh, I just think it's something we need to do for the town. It's... Uh... I know there's been some sort of concerns about it being, with it being a, uh, you know, in, in a conservation area, but not long ago we were talking about putting some ugly air conditioning units down, two ugly air conditioning units down the left hand side, and to me that's the default. That's the def if we can't find a better space, just just slightly down the left hand side, it'll still be seen by the public. We can have signs that. Is the worst case scenario, but I'm sure we can get much better, better, better public access, public accessible. So, you know, and I think we should have one. Right, uh, Nigel, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I, I think um, it's it's an area of town where there's a high footfall, and there isn't a close defibrillator. Fair enough. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, where the way this has been worded that we look into it, I think means it should be the town hall committee, which obviously is us five. But yes, I do think we could probably take it to the town hall committee and look into it because I think the sighting of it is the main point uh, in the grand scheme of this, that it's safe, it's visible, uh, you know, it's secure and everything. Jason, you've got your hand up and then I'll come back to you, Chris. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I'm completely agreement. I think um, it's a it's a key key piece of equipment that um, we should have, uh, and I fully support to uh, to Chris's motion. Chris, you had your hand up there. Yeah, basically, the whole idea of this motion is just get 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 it moving. So we'll probably have to have a word with the planning department where we can put it. They don't yeah. have to be the bright yellow. The British Art Foundation's default colour is, is a, a nice green. There are other possibilities just by moving the stuff around. I could send pictures where, where it could possibly go. But we start by, basically my idea is we start by just asking the planning department, it, do they mind where it go? I say that the worst case, it's just down the left-hand side where nobody nobody could object. But I think there's much nicer places that I'm... Uh, Basically, it's just, is there anywhere they wouldn't want us to have it? Right. Well, I fully agree with what you're saying there about the planning department, because I know we had fun when I was chairman at the Memorial Club doing things. Because we are in a conservation area, it's a case of what can be done on the front, what can be done down the side, where it is, what is the stonework and things like that. So I think... And I do know, I think you don't have to have it in bright yellow because the one at Little Jill's Nursery is white and I think the one at Dove School and Church is white. So, you know, there are other colours. So can I make a suggestion then that we we agree with your motion, Chris, that we explore the possibility and we get Sue to contact the planning department and see where would be possible and then... We, uh, we we all have a talk again on it and see what where where we what we feel about it, whether it's at a town hall committee or even as a just a round robin email. Are people happy with that? Yeah. I've got thumbs up, hands up. Are you all right with that, Sue? Yeah, yeah. We can deal with that, can't we? Yes. Thank you. Right. With that, we'll move on to number seventeen, 
which is another motion from Councillor Sizeland, in view of the stifling heating that can occur in, vent in the main room at the Town Hall, the Council undertakes to obtain quotes to open back up the previously bought up vent in the roof. Well, I think we've just mentioned that in the budget meeting and all the rest of it, that that's one of the things we want to do. And we've just budgeted towards a thousand pound for that. So are you happy that Sue takes that forward and gets three quotes and sees what can be done with that? How far do you wish to take that, Chris? That's why I mentioned it in the budget meeting. If, 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 if we could put some money aside just in case this does get... Uh, Yes, basically, if everybody else is happy. Uh, I was quite surprised, because I was trying to, when I walk, I've been in there when somebody's had a heart attack. It's it's stifling heart. I just went and walked around the building, and I thought, there's something wrong there. And I went inside, and I thought, where's that vent? And that's where this plan has come from, but it should be relatively cheap and work. Nigel, you had your hand up. Yes, uh, obviously, I, I think there's a, it, it's another safety concern that um, we, we should be doing something about the heat in the town hall. Um, but also, I would be loath to um, vote for any proposal that had air conditioning attached to it. I don't think any building in the north of England should be introducing something which is just burning energy. Um, so... Uh, yeah, Chris's proposal seems very sensible. Yeah, well, if obviously with the parish clerk's picture that's on there at the front of the town hall with the clock and the windows, if you look above the windows in the apex, is where the hole already is in the stonework. It's just that it's blanked off on the inside. I think if we investigate and see what can be done and get three quotes, you know, off people, we can come back as a group and decide where we're at with this one, Chris. Uh, I think that's agreed, but I just I know I've not got another motion, but I just would like to mention something. Uh, can I ask, which I think is an informal motion, can I ask that the the, 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 the flags are are half mast tomorrow for Captain Tom? Would would that be possible? So is that a possibility we could ask the caretakers to do? Yeah. Because I do, I, I know I asked at the beginning because it was what was been asked about uh, the minute silence. But yes, t uh, Downing Street and everywhere's got them at half mast for him. That's not a bad idea, Chris. We can add that to that if everybody's happy with that. I can't. Yeah, I've got thumbs up there from people. So yeah, I know that isn't a motion, but we could have asked that earlier. Sorry, we've gone off track there. Right, we move to number eighteen, which is a motion from Nigel. Now then, yes. I don't intend read. I don't intend reading all that out, Nigel. It's about seven or eight lines long. Most people have got it. I'll hand over to you on this one, if I may. Well, I, I think it's moved on a little bit since uh, I put this motion in to the clerk. Uh, that there are a couple of specifics that I'd like to draw out, and so I would like to amend my motion. I've got my motion written here, and and so ju just. For the, the benefit of the record, can I just read through it? Uh, I, I said uh, what, you, 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 you're meaning just the motion that you've got rewritten? Yes. Right, OK. Uh, I, I sent it around to councillors earlier, so it's no, no surprise to anyone. The, the council is de deeply concerned at recent correspondence from the George and Sarah Beresford Memorial Foundation, which suggests that the charity has rented its land to a trustee's family. The council asked the Charity Commission to investigate whether an order was made to allow this, either by the Commission or the courts. The council further notes that land intended for a playing field in its governing document is being used to generate income from farming and car parking. The council asked the Charity Commission to investigate whether an order was made to allow this, either by the Commission or the courts. The council was promised by the secretary of the charity on 13th of August, 2019, that she would provide a copy of the minutes of the last AGM and a complete list of trustees. This informa information has not yet been supplied 18 months later. And the council urges the charity to su supply this information. Furthermore, 
the council is deeply concerned that the charity is seeking to avoid scrutiny of its operations and change its structure to exclude the trustees appointed by Chapel on the and Peak Forest Parish Councils. This council will oppose any such changes and urges the Charity Commission to protect the interests of residents of this parish. Briefly, I'd like to go through a little bit of the background that I didn't cover last month and, and ask councillors to vote in favour of this motion. Can I just say, Nigel, before you start there, if I've got this right, you sent it round at 4.33 this afternoon and I have only just read it as you've been reading it out because that, in my mind, is far too late for the meeting, really, on that one. Should we actually be uh, discussing this and taking it, deferring it to the next meeting is one thing I'm going to say because we didn't have it in time for the agenda. People in the public realm haven't seen this motion that you've just read out and after that training on Friday, I'm just not sure where we stand. I will ask to our legal rep, obviously, in a second where we stand on this. You've got your hand up if you'd like to carry on, and then I'll ask yes, you to under, answer. Under uh, Rule 1H on page 6 of the standard orders, I can introduce the motion if agreed at the meeting. So it's, it's up to you councillors whether you can whether you agree to this. Um, under these rules of debate, it also says that I simply need to provide this amendment by the start of the meeting. And since you've had it for the last three hours or so, that's before then. Well, I hadn't read it till you just read it. So there we go. Sue, where do we stand? Um, I, I've got nothing to add, really. Um, that is correct, what's been said. And of course, at any point, it, it, if there's a motion in the meeting, somebody you know can propose an amendment, so. Right. Well, I think if what I would suggest then, the motion that is written down on your agenda basically is scrapped from what Nigel says. And the new one that he sent around at 4.30 today is which he wishes to go with. But obviously he's just put his hand up and said he wishes to give us a bit of background to this. Because I don't think we should make a decision without there being some background or substance to it. So back over to you, Nigel. Yes. So, I mean, this is not a surprise for councillors. You've all received my, my most recent summary of the concerns that I've got about this charity. I, I think it's safe to say that all our end goals are to improve the facilities for the residents of Sparapit, not only at the play park, but also with regard to the village hall and the field owned by the Beresford Trust. For two years, I've tried to get answers to my questions about Sparapit Park. And in August 2019, the Secretary of the Trust promised to send this council its accounts, bank statements, minutes, and a full list of trustees. And then nothing appeared. Whenever we've made requests, there have been no answers from the trustees, apart from personal attacks on our motives. This only changed when in December we raised the prospect of asking the Charity Com Commission to investigate. We've now been set a, sent a set of accounts which shows the son of a trustee paying rent to the charity. The most likely explanation is that he is farming the trust's land, land which should be used as a playing field. Unless the charity has court orders in place to allow this, then it's not right, and something has gone terribly wrong at the charity. For 18 months, the Beresford trustees have refused to accept this council's oversight. The charity must accept our current trustees and our future trustees. They're still refusing to do this and are making every argument against it. There is no room for interpretation. It is written into their governing document. But tonight, we have a decision to make. I believe we have a duty to the charity to go to the Charity Commission with our concerns about the farming of charity's land by the son of one of their trustees. And the charity's attempts at avoiding oversight of its activities. And I urge councillors to vote for the motion in front of us. 
Right. Well, <clears throat> obviously, once again, as I did earlier, bringing up about the public spaces protection order that's under correspondence, we do have correspondence that has come from the GNS Berryford Memorial Trust, which uh, does incorporate answers to a lot of what you've said here. We've had a rather precise and uh, document with everything d monitored, minuted, whatever you like to say, everything down in it and that, and also trust deeds, because uh, what I was going to say is from where I understand here, what started this off was, we have got play equipment, which is on their land up at Sparrow Pit, and we were on about maintaining up there, working up there. Was it their land? Were they right to lease it to us? We required the um, deed to say that it was their land. We required a deed, of, well, to update us that we've got the play equipment on there, which they have furnished and done. We have said that they have to... Um, appointees from the parish council because at the AGM of the parish council we put people forward to be on there and it, with their AGM runs out of sync with ours when we have our AGM in May we would be appointing two new people they don't actually have to be councillors it's who we appoint as a council but at the moment we have two trustees on there being Peter Harrison and Carol Cobb uh, which some of they do not accept they do Sorry. not accept they do not accept those trustees well, they, are saying, they, are saying, they are saying that they have two boards of trustees, one of which only contains two trustees which they choose and which controls their property. The other set of trustees control the village hall. Now, this is a legal nonsense and goes against their own governing document. Well, what I was going to say was I, 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 I am a, I'm listening to what you're saying and I'm just worried how far the parish council should get involved with this because once again it comes back to money and legalities uh jason's got his hand up so i think i'll let jason speak on it as well at the moment jason thank you chair um you, i i just want to pick up on a point where you said you, you wanted to postpone this potentially for another month I think this has gone on far too long. I think if, if Nigel, Nigel has, has, has got questions that he would like answered, and I as a council would like to see this off the minutes of every single meeting. So, it, it, uh, you know, a decision needs to be made tonight, please, Chair. And, and as a council, we need to move forward as a collective and, and, and put, this to, put this to bed, please. Right, well, with that, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Sue, as our responsible finance officer and letter and uh, responsible person, how far should the parish council go with this? Because is some of this a legal matter that is between the, tr the, the trust and the charity commission? Is it something that's for the police or whatever? Where do we actually stand legally on this? Because I would not want... I, I appreciate what Jason's saying. It's time it came off our thing. As far as I'm concerned, we've got the deeds that require our, us for our play equipment there and what we're doing. I don't know whether, you know, how far we need to go. What, what's the legality behind this? Um, at this point, I couldn't actually give you a definitive answer to that. I'm sorry. I mean, obviously, you need to think about the new lease that's been uh, presented um, to the council. And I suppose the other thing is, I'm assuming we're going to have an annual meeting in May and, and you can then appoint two new people, couldn't you, to the charity um, who would be able to investigate that on behalf of the council? Yeah, that, that, that's where I'm going from because I'm, I'm, I'm worried that, you know, it, it seems to be getting very personal and all the rest of it, this as it goes. And, uh, and I don't know. I don't know whether the council should be getting involved to this degree. Nigel, you've got your hand up. In May 2019, the Parish Council appointed two trustees to this charity, one of, one of whom was me, and the charity refused to accept the Council's two trustees. Now, it seems pointless going, leaving this until May so that, again, they can refuse 
the charity's two trustees. They have not accepted the, the, the charity's two current trustees. <laughs> they have invented a two-tier system of trustees so that the woman who is renting the charity's land out to her son is amongst the two trustees and all the rest of the trustees have no say in the matter. It seems obvious to me that the charity has been captured by, by someone whose family is farming the charity's land. But the thing is, from my point of view there, I, I appreciate what you've just said in respect to we appointed two trustees back in May. You did resign as a trustee when they wouldn't accept you. And we appointed Carol Cobb to replace you in the November meeting, I think it was. So I, we do I, still I, technically I have two trustees. I think, pretty, I think it's pretty obvious from my resignation note that I was not prepared to have legal re responsibility as far as the Charity Commission was concerned for the governance of a charity where the other trustees would not accept that I had the right to look at a bank account, the annual accounts, the minute book, or who other, which other people were actually trustees. Yeah, but what I'm saying is this, when you did resign, council, we did appoint somebody else. This so council, technically, we do this have council to... now knows that, that a, a charity, which we're... we're paying money, we're giving benefits to by maintaining their play park and which we are meant to appoint two trustees to is actually renting out its land to one of the trustees. We have a clear moral duty to, to either go to the charity commission or to go to the police. Right, Chris, you've got your hand up, you've been waiting. Yeah, we're just going around in circles here. But I agree with Jason. This has just gone on and on and on. Look, it it needs it needs, needs sorting and one way or the other. And you know, it's all this having to chase people who never who sort of are elusive like this. I mean, to, I'm happy, let's just vote. I'll, I'll second it just to, just so we can have a vote one way or the other on it, because it goes on and it's taking time up that should be on other things and that's because the this charity trustee or whatever they are and will not reply to stuff or will give us limited information so let's just have a vote whichever way it goes move on please right well i say i i think the council well i'm i'm sorry i think the council's got some of the information it requires i don't know where we stand with this but if that is your wish to have a vote is there anything else anybody else says before we get to the vote on this one? Stella, you haven't said anything as such on this. No, I made uh, my feelings. Uh, I made my point uh, at the last meeting when it was brought up. I just feel as though we need to get to the bottom of it because it's taking valuable time up. Like you say, I mean, it's nearly half past nine and we've still got a few more things to do. So just let's vote, get on with it, and then whatever the outcome is, uh, if it comes out that what it's all legal, then it's all legal. If it comes out it's not, there's something wrong, then it comes out. Do you know what I mean? We've just got to yes. get to the bottom of it. I appreciate what you're saying. So, with that, we will put it, if there's nothing else to be said, I, I think, you know, it's to, to, we go to the vote then. We have the proposal from Nigel of a new... Uh, motion which supersedes the one that's on our paper that he sent tonight Chris you're, you're seconding in that motion you say the, the new yeah. one so with the vote I'll start again Nigel yourself yeah Chris yeah Stella yeah Jason yeah and I'm sorry I'm saying no because I, I think we're overstepping the mark I think it should be for our trustees our two people to take it up but anyway it's 4-1 so we will follow I will I'll agree and follow with you on that one Stella right can I just say that if it proves that what I said last time I will publicly apologize uh, but 
you say it should be left to the tr two trustees. We haven't got any trustees because they, they left the council. Uh, that doesn't. That actually doesn't matter. We can I'm appoint saying, a person off the street. The same, even though they're not councillors, they can still be trustees on there yes, until we put somebody else forward. I'm just saying they're not going to come back because of who they are. They're not going to come back with yeah. any information to us. So I'm just saying. I probably think that uh, you know some personal things will uh, will will uh, will will out on this one. Right. So. Moving on, we'll get there. Actually, because of this, we'll be fairly quick on with the last bit at this, Stella, as it goes. Number 19, we have another motion from Councillor Gourlay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think uh, we should be giving out councillors' allowances, especially on a day when we've put up council taxes by almost 50%. I think it would be a, a good thing to do to put a mark in the sand and say, we will never give another councillor an allowance. Right, well, obviously I'm going to say some things to this uh, because I've been here for a long while. As you have just agreed your minutes from the AG, uh, from the FNGP and all the rest of it in the town hall, you did agree in those minutes not to visit this properly until we had got the new councillors in May. So I don't think your motion as it stands is brilliant because there's no time on it. It doesn't say when. And I do feel that it's uh, a bit quick in the respect of we're going to have eight new councillors in May and we can't say what their personal circumstances are. I know that in the past there are councillors and I admit I have uh, drawn my allowance and used it in certain places. And I know the one that we get towards the, uh, like fuel costs, when we were doing the new school and everything, and we were traveling up and down to Matlock, we had to claim fuel travel uh, allowance and what have you. Because if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I'm not on sufficient money to afford all that myself. I do feel that this could be visited in a better way in the respect of if we have to travel outside of the parish for meetings, like for these doubt things, if we have to go to Matlock or if we've got to go to county offices for anything, that we should be able to claim fuel allowance, you know, even at the borough council or the county council, you're allowed to claim out of pocket expenses so that you're not out of pocket. And I feel that this, could be worded better and I'd sooner we uh, looked at this as a proper motion ready for the May and that all the councillors because otherwise I feel if you take everything away as you've suggested here that you would turn it very elitist that you won't get the people who might just need that fuel cost or whatever does that mean every time we need to go somewhere we've got to ask for a taxi or has to go for a lift with somebody or we don't attend meetings it's all right at the moment while everything's on zoom but over the 20 years i've been on i've done a lot of traveling around and different things so um i'm sorry i'm against your motion as it's written but i'd like i'd like to see that we could possibly come up with something and reword it where you know so that people aren't out of pocket otherwise you're not going to bring in uh, lower income type people who give a lot to the community. Jason first and then Chris. Thank you, Chair. At the beginning of that speech, you mentioned that at the last F and G meeting that we said we'd uh, touch upon it again in May when the new councillors were, 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 were on board. Um, I, I probably thought that was enough. Right, it's okay, mate. Fetch out, Chris. Uh, maybe to address Tate Stewart's concerns on board, we should just, uh, you know, so it's shown that they're not stopping allowances, expenses. That it should say autom just just say automatic allowances. I don't know if Nigel would be 
wanting to take that amendment into his main main proposal. Would, would it be acceptable to you to to um, exclude petrol pe petrol expenses or travelling expenses? Me, 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 me personally, no, because we have our, uh, like I say, I get given an iPad to do my job as a borough councillor. They pay for the broadband. Uh, we are here have said other things. What I'm saying is I'd actually like this to go to, um, to, to another meeting and you come back with a better, you know, when we've had chance to bang it about because... You know, the like Jason's just said, we've agreed not to do out till the May meeting when we've other councillors. I feel that it would be unfair on other councillors just to go bang straight in with that. We should be looking at it. We don't know who our other councillors are that are going to join us in May, hopefully in May. And that, that, that's why I say I, th I just felt you were jumping the gun a little bit. That was all. Jason, you've put your hand up again. Yeah. So thank you, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Again, you know, I do understand where Nigel's coming from, but as I've made it clear in emails, uh, I have my own views. I have my own counter motions that I'm prepared to put to the council. However, I would like until there were 13 people around the table before I put that motion forward, because I feel that would be the best way to get a result. Well, I, I would, at that, I would like to propose, if you like, uh, a motion along those lines, Jason, then that we don't accept Nigel's motion here, that we work to what we've done in the F and GP, that we will talk, it'll be an agenda item in May for the finance when we get there, that we do it, well, I don't know whether May's, we need to put May in, but when we have a full complement or best part of a full complement of councillors, when we can discuss it between all of us, because it will be, it will affect people in a different, a different way. Nigel, you've got your hand up. Yeah, uh, I, I'm. I'm not prepared to push this through when when there's only potentially th three against two. It's you know been a long night. Um, we've had enough splits tonight. I withdraw the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So the motion from Nigel is withdrawn there. But as we say, I think we need to revisit it in a proper vein in the future. Right. Thank you for that, Nigel. Saves a vote on that one for now. Uh, number 20, the schedule of accounts presented that you received this morning for, this morning or yesterday from Emma. Any, uh, let me find them quickly. Somewhere here. I've got all sorts. There we go. Is there any questions for, oh, well, Nigel's got his hand up straight away. Uh, go on, Nigel. Yeah. Um, can I get an explanation what a slitter machine is? Oh, sorry. Right. The service of it. It's the actual service of it. It's what, something what is a slitter machine? You use it on the bowling green. And it, I think it makes slits, basically, that aerate the green. Yeah. What I could be making. Jason, you, Jay, uh, I was just going to say, do you want me to answer part of that? And I see Jason's got his hand up. But as he's chair of amenities, I wonder whether his hand was up to actually answer that for you. No, it's a case Carry of on, between, when they finish bowl, when they finish bowling before they start the next season, uh, over a period of time, the park keeper, I call it a spiker. They call it a slitter. It's a, like an aerator. It's like you walking around your lawn with those spikes on the bottom of your shoes. It's it's something that has to be done, but the machine does need to be maintained, and that's one of the things we have been talking about. Jason, you've got your hand up. Yeah, thanks, Sue. Check number 9056 for the annual play inspections to Alliance. Yeah. Is, is that a one-off or is that like a, an annual fee? It's annual, that. Sorry, annual. Annual. Um, if you remember in around about October, I brought concerns over the quality of the inspection from, from the Alliance. Uh, and uh, I did ask, well, the Immunities Committee asked for three quotes on moving the, the uh, inspections to another company. But I, I, I don't remember seeing, seeing those quotes provided. Is, so is this paid for 2021 or is this paying for 2020? This is paying for the year we're in at the moment. Um, I'm pretty sure right. that we've tried to find um, some alternatives and we've been to Dalk and asked them 
but there appears to be nobody local to us that could do it. Um, I think there is perhaps the possibility that we could train our own staff to do it. Right. Okay. Well, I, 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 I've got to say, Chris has got his hand up and then Stella. Chris first. It was very basically what, the same thing because, you know, we did vote to get three quotes. I'm sure Emma said she'd already got two quotes, unless I imagined it. But no, there is a website you go on and uh, it will, uh, you know, so it's, well, that is was one of our biggest concern. And I think maybe to show to our neighbours that we are taking things seriously. When, when we say it's this year, is it this financial year or this uh, calendar year, do we know? Financial year. So basically, it, we pay... So this is from... Oh, from the beginning of January, right. April, April. April, sorry, April. Yeah. So it's not... So, so, so it's not for the next financial year. So basically, this payment will just take us up to uh, end of April this year. End of March. End of March. Yeah. So that's all we're paying. That's all we're, we're, yeah. we're paying. That's all we're paying for. So uh, if we got these quotes, we we would still have the option yeah. after after yeah. that to uh, to change. Yeah, you're having another amenities committee, aren't you? Soon, I think. Right. So. Would you would you be able to put it as a, an item? Well, with Jason's, if Jason would, do you think that would be a good idea to go on the agenda? Jason? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'll, yeah, sorry, thanks, thanks, Chair. So, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to Emma tomorrow and we'll make sure that that's on there for uh, the next meeting. Yeah, well, I have two other hands up. Stella had got a hand up and then um, uh, Nigel. Yeah, uh, basically, if, if there is, a, like Sue said, if there is a way that we can train our own, surely we can train someone to do it that suits our need because, obviously, these inspections... I haven't done us any favours, so if we could train somebody to do it, you know, maybe Phil or somebody like that might be interested in doing some extra work and earning extra money. I don't know, but it seems sensible to look for someone who knows the park itself and knows what needs inspecting and reporting back to us straight away. <laughs> Nigel? You had your hand up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you know it. It, it should be an, an amenities meeting. I, I think we've all shown that we have deep concerns about this particular company carrying on without having a head-to-head -head competition of a bid with someone else. Um, we, I, I think, um, as as last year um, showed, we, we we need to get safety inspections and maintenance schedules sorted out and I'm sure Jason is going to do that through the amenities committee. Well what I was going to make a suggestion was uh, because this is for the past year as Chris has alluded to now we need to pay them for what they've done we might not be happy with what they've done whether we can get a discount or anything back would be very nice but I think because we've got time we should take this to the amenities committee we should look at the three quotes and see where we can go in the future because as it goes, it used to be done by the Borough Council. The Borough Councillors now so outsourced it to Alliance. Uh, we did have, this is the first year we've had with Alliance. So we, we did check whether we, it was direct and everything. So I can remember that uh, you're right, Jason, things were said there. But I think the best thing is probably uh, agree the accounts, pay them. And because I think we've probably still got some outstanding money with the borough, really, where they didn't do uh, proper inspections. So, Jason, you've got your hand up if you're happy. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to take that forward. But just on that, then, I've, what you've just said, I, 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 you know, I've got a bone of contention with the Borough Council as well as not just Alliance. Yeah, well, that was the year before. So we'll have to go backwards on that and look at the account. So I think some work we'll need doing there with the accounts, with Sue, with Emma, with yourself and myself. So with with that proviso that we look into that one, is, are people happy for the accounts to be paid this month? Just a hands up from everybody uh, happily. Yeah, thank you very much. Now then, as we go move on, the correspondence, uh, I will slightly say, we, we, could we can either take them in order or we can... Uh, <laughs> 
take them out of order. It's up to you which you like which ones you want to do because oh, well, we'll start at the top. We have one from the friends of the station first that you have communication come through. Sue, do you wish to take us through or? Uh, no, it was just the um, chair of the Friends of Chapel Station um, sent it in just to make you aware. Because normally we don't really get this until the AGM, do we, in uh, May, yeah. of what they've done for the year. So I was quite surprised to see this myself. I think and as it is, is their road. I don't know. Is there anything we can do to assist? I, th I think it's been sorted because there's been a, a subsequent email but I think he just wanted to make you aware in case any residents were contacting you about the issues. Right, so we've replied, to, that's the reply and that sorts that one. Uh, where are we with my next one? Uh, the public footpath diversion order. That, that's just been uh, presented to us by High Peak Borough Council. Oh yeah, I, I, that was the one, yes, I did see this. Now I know, I, I, I'm not going to say we need to do anything with this one or anything. This is on, uh, uh, has been on the cards for a long, long while. This probably is before all of you came on to the parish council because the, the field there, they applied to build some houses in it to the people who owned it. It came through our planning, the, the footpath came through, then the planning came through and all those things. It, it, it's probably something that's about six or eight years old, this. And I'll be honest and truthful, when I saw it, I thought, thank God that that's finally come through. It does actually make sense. And if you go around there where they're going to build and everything, rather than it going through somebody's garden, it does make sense. So it's nice to see that that's been actually finalised and written on. But it does mean that it can go towards you, Chris, in the respect of your footpaths group, in the respect of that that one has been diverted and has got a proper diversion as such, so that the footpaths group know about that. We really more tramway. Uh, right. Well, tramway going speed. back then, we had the three Ps. You know, there was a lot more done with paths. So it's nice to see that that's... So that, that's actually a proper one. So that's really, like you say, for notification more than anything. But at least, you know, it has happened. Then, obviously, I, I spoke about it earlier. The Public Spaces Protection Order, which you've now got there to see about the uh, wildfires and everything. Now, the case is with this, obviously... I don't know whether people want to look at that. I'm, and, and I'm sorry to be putting it on to you, Jason, with amenities as such. But I don't know whether we want to be doing anything in the respect of the Needham Rec or the park, whether we would want to look into this, whether it affects us if people were to let off Chinese lanterns or to use about, you know, re, uh, barbecues or anything like that. I think that's just one for you. Uh, you know, it's to know, but to uh, see what you think. Yes, you put your hand up. What do you do? You want to say something towards that? Yeah, uh, make sure. Yeah, yeah, I would actually, Chair. Um, I've, I've really sort of only picked up on this tonight. To be honest with you, it wasn't wasn't top of my priority list. But um, ordinarily, you'd think I might support it. But but you know, I'm not I'm not sure that I would completely support something like that, Chair. No, I say, I, th I think that could be what I would suggest if, uh, and I'll come to Nigel in a sec with his hand up, I would suggest if we have this police meeting that we're talking about, that this is one of the things, because of it being a public uh, spaces order, it's a case of how are the police going to deal with it, well, how do they feel they would deal with it on our, on our behalf, on our land, you know, it would be a question to ask. Nigel, you had your hand up. I, I, just, I just don't think it's something that we have a problem with. No, I think we. I think it's more out in the open, open countryside than the big park. But the trouble is, you see, I think it's what is it, a third of the parish councils within the peak park. So that's why we get to the notifications. Right, moving on then to the GNS Beresford Memorial Hall. Well, I think we've dealt with that, haven't we now? I don't think we need to read or say anything to that one because we've dealt with it. And the next one then is number 22. I've put this in for a chairman's virtual script for myself, Jason, yourself, Chris and Nigel. Uh, these are two, two uh, abstracts as such. This is what is said 
at the beginning of meetings by the chairman at the borough council. We've received, we've managed, Sue's got this off Lyndon Vernon. And then that's what they put in the second piece is what they put in the minutes to say that it's been said to all the members of the public. What I'd like to say is, could I pass that on to you, Nigel, as communications and have a look at that and actually reword it for ourselves and then we can use it as chairman at the beginning of all our meetings and Sue has a standard one then that she can put on the minutes so that we don't forget because like it last month I forgot to say about it was being recorded I did say it this week this yeah tonight and I'd just like that to be something formal that we could do that would make life easier for us and for Sue and the workings of the council. Nigel, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I'm happy to do that. And I'll, I, I don't think uh, I'll, I'll have a communications meeting soon, uh, but um, I, I, I will pass it round councillors until we're agreed with it and then bring it to the next full council meeting. Um, but the, 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 the thing that I wanted to, to really raise, I think it is worthwhile having a little bit of a discussion about it. I quite like it that I can see people's reactions to what I'm saying. And I know I'm looking down half the time at my papers, but, you know, I, 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 in front of me here, I've also got an, another screen where I can see all your faces. Um, and I, I, I can sort of... So, so the bit about turning off cameras when you're not speaking, I, I, I would not be keen on that. The other thing is that up here, the, the, the thing that's picking up my... Uh, that, that's that's uh, I'm picking up my camera um, is is a mobile phone and so it's quite difficult actually to to raise my hand on this one yes. rather than on my computer. Um, so uh, that, that's just two points that that I I think if we could tweak it um, where councillors can turn off their mobile to, turn off their their video if they want to and can raise their hand if they want to, or can raise their hand physically. Those, yeah. those are my two minor concerns. Well, the two that I, that I will say to that is, the reason we've got that at the Borough Council is because you've got 40-odd councillors, and it sucks the battery and all the rest of it, and the iPads and that won't work if everybody's on. And also, when you're turning off your picture and turning off your microphone it actually stops the feedback and everything chris has been party to a couple with uh kath where there's been feedback and it doesn't come out very well the raise the hand like jason's been using tonight the little yellow hand in the corner does work well because it leads the ones that are on your screen you don't miss them I, I i'm not saying that that should be our virtual script but i would just like to see that we've got something in our in our midst that is suitable for us that we all chairman can use and then it makes it legal and easier for sue to deal with and like the uh, the one that when we've said it the piece that we decide that goes on the top of the minutes that she writes that can be on all of them it's there sorted ready and done she doesn't have to keep typing it out every month chris you've got your hand up yeah, sorry a bit confused wasn't me and Kathy. It was when uh, those two councillors were in the same either the same room or, ne or next we have the feedback issue that was uh, uh you know when the rude word happened that that was a time we had the feedback because it was feeding back between it was going in a loop between their speakers and microphones so I, I knew i knew you were present that's what i was meaning that you oh sorry uh, I think stella one. keeps having her hand up and I, I felt i felt i felt rude going in there no it was right, stella i was just going to say that the only thing um, i agree that we need something but turning your video off, on and off, on and off. It's bad enough when you forget to turn your sound on. You forget to turn your video on. Plus, I think the public like to see the councillors at the meeting. Yeah. Uh, I, so I, it just I, takes I, more I time. Agree. I mean, it's nearly 10 o'clock. It's gone on far too long again. It's, well, it's, it's quarter to 10 by my uh, digital chronometer here. We've been two and three quarters, yeah. Two and a quarter long hours. Time. Well, we did say with the standing orders, it's meant to be about two hours. So with the time of the preset tonight, I was going to say, we've all, if, if you're happy with that to go to communications, or well, Nigel will do the round around with that and see what we come up with. Um, the next one is press releases. Nigel's already said about that one, about the preset. 
unless anybody else has got anything to say about press releases, I think that's really the only one that probably comes out of tonight. Unless anybody suddenly sticks around. Uh, Stella? Right, I've got uh, the trophies have come, haven't they? So we need to sort that out. So is that going to be sorted in the communications meeting? Because that's well, for 2020. I would hope so. But as we are under COVID at the moment, well, we can't really go around and give them to them and what have you, can we, very easily? No, I, I was just... Oh, sorry. I, I was going to say, Stella. Right, uh, we could just probably arrange it, get the paper there, put it on the doorstep, have someone open the... As, say, Gemma or Ted, have them open the door and then get a picture of them and put it in the paper. Just because we're going to be doing 2021 soon, I know we've got to get a committee together, which we can organise in the communications, but we're going to be giving it you know, to me. And COVID could be on till July, August. So you've just no idea. Well, I, th I think a lot will depend on that, what the government say in the respect of this May the, it's May the 6th or 7th, when the election should be. The legislation that they've got about the doing it with the police runs out then. They've got to redo it by then. So I think we'll know before then what we can do. So I think we can deal with it through communications. Yeah. And, uh, Chris has got his hand up on Nigel. So Chris first. I think we need to get these out as quickly as possible. Now, the two, the two veterans, we could give the trophies to the British Legion and they could socially distance, pass it on, which I think would be a lovely touch. And maybe uh, Stella could, does know the other recipient. Am I right, Stella? You know the other... I, I, yeah. I, know, I know the other recipient as well. So I think we need to get them out in this week. You never know what's going to happen to people. You know, and it's time's going on. Right, well, I think uh, what I would suggest then is Stella and myself, if we get together and see what we can sort out for these, do you think? Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I don't want to be in a picture or anything. I just think it'd be nice if we got in touch with the press uh, to call Ben from uh, Buckton Advertiser. came, arranged a time, say, with Gemma. She came to the doorstep, picked it up and took pictures. That'd suit me fine. And then she can say a little piece. Right. Nigel, you've got your hand up. I, I think you're more likely to get in the paper if if you just drop off the the trophies, ask them to get a picture of themselves holding the trophy, and send it to the books and advertiser, because right. uh, I, I doubt whether the books and advertiser would send a photographer to an old man's door. It's you know. Well, we've got a we've got a slight moment. we've got a slight problem with the with the one for Ted Fell. Anyway, we've got to have to work out when he's here because obviously he's in uh, Chelsea Pensioners' home in London. He's gone down London now, so we'll have to work right. out with Sally when he's here. Stella, we'll work. Out, well, me and you will work out what we can do then over the next couple of weeks. Yes, before the next. That's what, I, that's like what I'm making the suggestion of. Yeah, I would say come get them out in the next week. Time's going on, and the, they've won these awards. We need to get them to do them personally. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Well, with that, I am going to say, because of the conversations that we had on Friday and uh, different things, number 24 that says to resolve the exclude the public impression. As we have nothing in this, we could have actually left this off the uh, mini, off the agenda tonight. So with that, it brings the meeting to a close. We do not have any part two or anything to resolve the press and public to move. So number 24 is a non-starter. That brings us to the end of the meeting. And like I say, sorry it's taken you two hours, 20 minutes, Stella, on that one. But we have spent an hour and a bit on the precept, which was a very important one. And we've got through some other business as well. So I would just like to say thank you for, to everybody for sitting through that, because it's one of the hardest meetings of the year to deal with that, with precepts. Yeah. The next hardest is the May one, when we've got new people who don't know the how things work but anyway thank you all very much for your attendance and please yeah. as i would say normally drive home carefully but i'll say stagger up uh, up the stairs to bed carefully good night everybody good thank night. you very much Bye. Good night. thank you sue you like to slowly switch everybody off or whichever way you want to work it if you're happy with that
Right. Cheerio. All right, Nigel. I'll I'll speak to you. Yeah. And on. <laughs> let's have a let's have a talk tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. The phone's ringing already. <laughs> <laughs>